Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to take another look at our MATLAB while loops. And specifically, we are going to combine our MATLAB while loop with an if statement to have a little bit of control over the behavior of our while loop. And we're going to go back and we're going to revisit an earlier problem where we were looking at the balance of a checkbook or a debit card. And if you recall, we were accidentally overdrafting depending on what our last purchase was. And so to begin with, what I'd like to do is I'd like to simply revisit the original problem, maybe make some minor changes, but fundamentally keep it the same in that we started off with a balance of 100, I'm going to make a quick note here that this was the original version. And then ultimately what we want to do is we want to set up a while loop that will run while our balance was greater than zero. And, and then we will simply make purchases or mock purchases or model the purchase, however you want to think of it by using the RAND I number generator, and we're going to max it out at 10. In other words, we're going to be making purchases between the values of 1 to 10. And you can play around with which random number generator you want to use, but this fundamentally will get us what we want. And then ultimately, we will simply do balance is equal to balance minus the purchase. And fundamentally, that's where we started. Um, we'll have a display outside of the while loop. In the earlier example, we put the display inside the while loop. And I'd like to make just one minor change to this one. I'm going to keep track of the total number of purchases I make by setting up this variable called purchase count. I'm going to set it equal to zero. And then every time I make a purchase, well, I'm just simply going to increment the count. And so it's going to be purchase count is equal to purchase count plus one. And then we're going to follow this up with a display and an S print F, which you can also do as an F print F. And I'm going to keep track of the count, which is going to be the display count, or rather the purchase count, sorry. The final purchase, which I'm going to represent as point percent point two F for the two decimal places. And then lastly, the balance, whatever the final balance was. Now, keep in mind, this is a little different from the first time that we've done this in that now the display and the S print F are outside of the wallet. In other words, we're only interested in the final purchase count, the final purchase, whatever that might have been, as well as the final balance. And so the idea is that we really want to focus in on just the issues with this while loop. Now I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this. I'm gonna go ahead and hit F9. And you can see here that I make a total of 18 purchases. My last purchase was not that significant. It was only $3, but it did put us in the hole minus $2. In other words, if we overdrafted the account. Now we can do this a couple of times here and you can see uh, this case, I also have 18 purchases with my last one also overdrafting me. And again, just because we're using a random number generator, I'm ultimately going to end up getting different values. This time I got lucky and then my last purchase was a dollar. So it brought my balance down to zero. But you can see the problem is that basically I can accidentally overdraft the account. And so the idea here is that we want to look at a number of different ways that you can handle this problem. And so let's move on to another version now. The another version is going to combine the while loop with an if statement. And so the idea here is that hopefully you've been following along with some of the earlier videos on the if statements, and we're going to combine this now with the while loops to be able to produce a while loop that does, in fact, stop appropriately. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put a space here. I just noticed that I made a typo earlier. That doesn't really matter. It's more for aesthetics. Technically, it will work, but it is a little harder to read. Now, let's go ahead and restart this problem. Uh, we'll set our balance equal to 100. Uh, we will, again, have our purchase count. None of this changes. We will initialize that back to zero. We will, again, also have our while loop balance greater than zero, and then our end. And then we will also go ahead and set up the purchases exactly the same way that we did before, values from one to 10. As a matter of fact, you could just simply copy and paste this code rather than typing it in again. But this time around, what we want to do is we want to include an if statement 
that checks to see that the purchase that you are attempting to make is in fact less than or equal to whatever the balance happens to currently be. Now, we're going to go ahead and follow this up with an else and an n before we get too far along. But then in the if branch, we want to think very carefully about what should happen here. In other words, if the purchase, the amount that you're attempting to purchase is less than or equal to the balance, then we simply buy it. Under the else, well, what we would do here is we would essentially put it back on the shelf. And so imagine that you're in a convenience store, you come up to the register and you discover that you don't have enough money in your account to purchase the item that you were trying to purchase. And so you put it back on the shelf. Well, what does buy it look like? Well, buy it just simply is what we did before where we subtract from the current balance, whatever the purchase was. And then we simply increment the purchase count by again saying purchase count is equal to purchase count plus one. And then ultimately what we want to do is we want to display outside of this while loop, what the final count, what the final purchase is and what the final balance is. So at this point, what we could do is we could simply copy and paste this down. We could reuse this. I'm gonna go ahead and clear my workspace. And I'm going to run this second set now. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and clear the console or the command window as well. I'm going to rerun this now, the second one. And you'll see that I've now made 25 purchases. Boy, I got very lucky on this one. Bunch of smaller valued items. 20, 21, 19. But by now you should notice that in all of these examples, my balance is in fact zero. So let's take a closer look at what is actually happening. And to do that, what I'd like to do is I would like to put another display in under my else. And I'm just going to put a warning in here, however you want to word it, but warning, putting the item back on the shelf or whatever you want to think of this as. Basically, it's saying you don't have enough money. And now let's see how many times we have attempted to purchase something only to discover that we do, in fact, not have enough money in the account. And so you can see here that the majority of the time, or at least for this particular one, we tried many, many times to put uh, to purchase something that we did not have enough money for. So I tell you what, let's modify this one ever so slightly here. We are again going to change this. How about if we say warning, not enough balance. And then why don't we go ahead and follow this up then with another comment under the true branch or this first part where we buy it. And we're also going to follow this up with a display. And just put a note here that says, purchasing. And again, we can create as much noise as we would like, but the point is that you could see now, even without debugging this one, that effectively I purchased a bunch of stuff. As a matter of fact, we can combine this with an S printf to figure out exactly what I have purchased. And then I try multiple times by going up to the register discovering that I don't have enough balance in my checking account or my debit card until finally I make the last purchase. In other words, the random number generator happens to generate the exact number that matches that final balance. And I think you would admit that would probably be a little annoying, particularly if you were the person at the register trying to check you out. In other words, you basically came up over and over again and that leads us to one potential solution. In this case, what we can do is we can introduce a break in the else. Now, the problem with this is that it allows for us to exit the while loop in a separate path from the condition or from the exception in the while condition. In other words, basically what we're doing is we are now bypassing this check and that the first time you come up to the register, 
when you don't have enough money in your account, what happens is you stop trying. And to understand the difference in the behavior, well, I'm simply going to highlight this and run it one more time with that one minor change. And you'll notice that I immediately get kicked out of the while loop. I tried to make a $4 purchase with only a $3 balance. And at this point, then I don't try any more. So you want to consider now using the break, but use it sparingly. And so the idea here is that Instead of breaking out of the while loop early, why don't we just simply modify the condition so that it won't happen? And that leads us now to version three. And this is the use of a flag plus an if statement to be able to control whether or not the loop continues. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to start off again with my balance variable, set it equal to 100. My purchase count, nothing really changes there. Start off with that one equal to zero. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in a third variable called is broke. And is broke initially is going to be set to false. And the idea here is that as long as I have money, well, then I should be able to purchase things. And the way we do this then is we could simply set up a while loop and while is broke equal to false. Well, much like before, we simply say purchase equal to rand i 10. And then what we do is we check to see if that purchase that we are attempting to make is in fact less than or equal to the balance else. And well, if it is in fact less than or equal to the balance, well, that's perfectly fine. We buy it. What does buy it look like? Well, that's simply balance is equal to balance minus purchase. And of course, what we want to do then is we want to also increment the purchase count But under the else, then, we put it back and we leave. And whereas in the earlier example, we would put a break in here, what we can do instead is we can essentially just trip this flag here. In other words, basically, we can change the value of is broke equal to true. In other words, we attempted to purchase something. We realized we don't have enough money. It's time to stop buying stuff, even though we technically still have a little bit in our account. And to prove that this does in fact work, what we can do is we can copy and paste the display in sprintf from the earlier example. I'm going to go ahead and clear my workspace as well as the command window. We can add a little more noise if we'd like. We seem to have a typo here. Ah, yes, purchase count is equal to purchase count plus one. One more time. And you can see here that I have exited the loop, but I still have money. And more importantly, I have a positive balance, not a negative balance in my account. I tried to make a $10 purchase. I only had $2 left. And effectively what I've done is I have broken out of the while loop using this flag or this Boolean value. And again, you can rerun this as many times as you'd like. And the worst thing that can happen, and just because I'm trying to record this, that means it probably won't happen, but we fundamentally could get down to a balance of zero. There we go. And so you will never in fact, run negative or overdraft your account. But more importantly, you will be gracefully exiting the while loop. In other words, you're going to be using the condition that the while loop is built around. Now, 
Hopefully you found this video useful. There were three different ways to leverage a while loop in ever increasing or ever refined ways, as well as the minor change that we made with this break. Again, I don't discourage you to from using the break. However, though, use it very sparingly. In other words, if you can control the condition through the while loop, in other words, through the condition or through the expression of the while loop, do so and use the breaks very sparingly. What they can do is they can lead to very ugly, very unreadable and very unmaintainable code if you're not careful. So as I said before, hopefully you found this video useful. If you have any questions, comments or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out to me and thank you for watching.